Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays for your weekly Factorio update and as ever we're still playing Space Exploration with Crastorio 2 and on version Space Exploration version 0.6 as well. As always the streams and uh, videos are sponsored by trefoil.be so if you need some hosting services go over to trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays and sign up there and you get 20% off when you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout. So let's have a look at what we've been doing today. So the most I've been basically spent the last stream building extra stuff up along the bus of various different things. So we'll start here at the end with the, um, with the with the cargo rocket systems I've been building up because that's probably the most exciting. So this is built mostly as a proof of concept and will need to be expanded in the future because the throughput isn't isn't remotely high enough. As you can see down here we've, we've not got any um, well, there's, no, sorry, take it back. There's one cargo pod going, making its way along the uh, along the belt over here, and that's heading into the into the cargo rocket over here, where it'll be loaded in, and eventually we'll get up to a hundred of these. And once you've got a hundred sections of cargo rocket and a space capsule, and you've filled it up with rock, liquid rocket fuel, and you've put a cargo in it, you can then choose where you want it to go and and set up everything else like that. So we'll we'll get onto that in a future episode. But for now, we're in the process of building the thing, the system up. And I've done the usual thing over here where you um, attach your inserter that's putting in the, the cargo rocket sections to the, to the system itself and tell it to stop when there's when there's more, when you get to 100. So if there's less than 100, it'll carry on putting them in. When it gets to 100, it'll stop and then the uh, you'll make the rocket and you won't end up putting any of the cargo rocket sections into the rocket because that's not what we want to do. So yes, we are very, very short of the, um, the the rocket control modules at the moment. That's the limiting factor here. And that's going to be fairly easy to increase because I've designed this reasonably sensibly in such a way that I can extend this over here, uh, extend this further up and bring more in. However, I have to admit, I was having a bit of a, um, a bit of a spaghetti frenzy in the last stream uh, where I was just sort of got a bit fed up with trying to do things neatly and just started cramming things in wherever they'll go. So here you can see that we've got a belt coming up here with these components on it which were needed for the uh, for the um, burner inserters but then I've also got them being brought up here for the pipe for the pumps which are needed in order to make the, uh, the the fuel tanks for the for the um, for the rocket sections. So this isn't isn't great design I will happily admit this stuff is crammed in a little bit too close together should be a little bit more spread apart and it should be a bit more just placed down a bit more neatly but um, as it was well I, bu I built these up first and I thought okay that's that's fine I'll stop I'll do all of the inserters that are required for the um, for the cargo modules these things cargo pods then I moved on to these and I thought, okay, I'm also going to need the pumps as well. What do pumps need? Oh, pumps need um, small electric motors and and pipes. Well, I've got the pipes here already being brought over for the for the um, for the fuel pods. So let's let's start making them from here as well. Um, and I'll bring in the electric motors around this way because they're already here. And then, oh dear, how am I going to get these into the um, into the fuel pods? Well, I'll bring them over here onto this side where there's a bit more space and. To be honest, it is a bit of a mess. Um, I might redesign this to put the um, to bring the pumps up this side and, and pass them across from here. That might be slightly neater rather than going under there. But other than that, there's not a great deal I can do without a massive redesign, which it probably needs anyway. However, at some point in the future, we're going to have the option of building these things with uh, beryllium as well. So we at that point, we might switch over and start doing that instead, uh, which basically halves the price, halves the number of inputs you need. Or rather, you get twice as much output for each build in exchange for, for putting in about eight pieces of beryllium. The other thing is, I'm still quite in favour of minimising the number of cargo rockets we use. So, yeah, sure, we'll need to use them when we go off to a new place, at least until we get spaceships. And we'll want to use them for blasting off into Norvis orbit, which is why I've left a decent amount of space around it to, to feed m many, many, many different things into it. Uh, but, late, but generally, I think I'd quite like to avoid it for moving raw materials around. So, we shall see how that goes. But here, there's a bit of space, so I can have this belt go across here, and then I can have um, this one go in... Uh, oops, no, go go this way and then up here and this one go across and up here like this. And then it's going to just be a case of copying this and putting in more of these up here and boom, like that, just like that. It'll double the it'll double the throughput of the all of the uh, all the stuff we're making. So it's yeah, it's not it's not Im it's not impossible to work with this the level of spaghetti as I've started building, but it is a little bit of a mess I have I, I will admit actually that should probably come across two squares because this belt up here is going to be in the way as well, um, but never mind you know it, it's a, it's a work in progress this will be removed anyway but yeah I can I can improve the speed like that I could even put in speed modules but to be honest I don't expect us to be launching that many rockets so maybe this will be okay we shall see. So yes, we've got rockets being made now. That's that's quite exciting. 
I've also started um, over here. I've I, I've started making all of the the bits and pieces you need for well for the rocket silos and, and landing pads themselves because we're we're going to need lots of well we're going to need some of those at least. And we're gonna, it's going to be nice to have have them be, have them being made ma and, and available. And they take so much stuff that you don't really want to load all of that up into your inventory and build it there. It's just it's just not worth it. It's much easier to, to put this down and just have the have the bus feed into it for ages. And that's put quite that put did put quite a heavy load onto the bus. But I think I mean the most of the most of the heavy loads have been taken off the bus now because we've stopped doing research we're not making circuits on the bus so i think the bus can pretty much stand something taking a few thousand um concrete for a, for a little while and a few thousand steel um maybe not the steel we did run a bit low on that but in general it should should be all right so around here we're here we're also making all the the other bits and pieces so you need you need fluid tanks for this as well so we've got um our own pipes. So what I've got here is I've got these offsets, as you'll notice from this one. So that means I'm able to use the long inserters here and here to pass the pipes and the tanks from there straight into here. So I'm doing direct insertion without having to to put, sort of put the machines all the other machines all the way around it by just offsetting them a little bit. And then we've got the um, the, the the iron girders here that have been that are needed for the tanks as well. So all that's just being passed over into here, and, and it's, all, it's all yeah working quite neatly. Um. We also wanted to have um, defence against all of the space shenaniganery, and I showed you these machines at the end of the last video. So we had um, had the machines in place to make the umbrella defences and the uh, meteorite defences, and then, so now I've just plugged in all of the all the different things we need onto these belts: so glass and copper and steel and batteries and concrete and blue circuits. Just crammed all of that in around these two machines, and then they can just pull in all of those bits and pieces. And we've now got we've got 30 of these in stock. We've got three of these, and I've put together some guns up here. One of the things I discovered that Tristan told me is you can actually do direct insertion from gun to gun. So because these don't need, you don't need a great deal of throughput on these um, because they don't fire very often. You don't tend to get meteor attacks very often. Or, um, so you can have one machine at the bottom here just passing the stuff across, in, passing the ammunition across into the bottom gun and then just let it pass it all the way up, all the way up, all the way up, all the way up through all the rest of your guns and it's absolutely fine. And one of the nice things about this as opposed to having run a belt up the middle is it saves a little bit of space but then if I also wanted to put it, if I needed more guns I could just put in another row along here like, like this and then just feed them out of the guns next to them like this. Now okay we'll need power for this as well so that's another thing to worry about. Uh, like so. But now you can see they all just sp springs into motion and we're passing ammunition across into those. Yes, we've pulled all the all the all the spare ammunition out of this one, but it's still got I was gonna say it's still got one in it, maybe it actually hasn't. But they will then just pass it up and it and then this will make will make an additional one. It'll all be passed up until everything is absolutely happy. And we and we can put in as many then, then we can basically fill up this entire area with guns if we need to. Um, and if I wanted to I could even have it being unloaded from here onto a belt to go over to here to for even more over this way for even more guns or whatever whatever I need to do. So it's a lovely flexible system system to use. Now in the same area there were a few other things that people were asking for. So Mark's been asking for um, all of the all the nuclear stuff for a little while. I think he wants to set up a nuclear power plant somewhere but at some point we are definitely going to need uranium in various forms because some of the later researches require it. So off here as well because we've got a lot of the same sort of ingredients required. So these for example the centrifuges require big electric motors, processing units, uh, concrete, heat shield and steel. Most of that is already in this area, so we have we have the uh, the concrete and the blue circuits here. We've got the steel and the glass or copper or whatever it was around, available around here, and then I was able to bring in. <laughs> this was a bit of another bit of horrible um, belt spaghetti. My bus is getting into a, it's turning into a horrible horrible mess, but never mind. We're also bringing in from there. We're bringing in the heat shield and the big electric motors around here in order to load them in. Up here, same sort of things. We're we're able to make the um, the what are these? The nuclear reactors, heat pipes, and heat exchangers off basically off what was already on these on these belts here. Um, there were a couple of complications in here. One is that you need iron to make the pipes to make the heat exchangers. So I've again squeezed an iron belt through here. The other one is that you need quartz, and quartz has about three uses. One of the uses is over here. Where we're making silicon, so we're making low, we're making massive quantities of quartz out out of the sand that comes out of here, because and then we're turning all of that into silicon, which is then being fed down into trains and brought over onto the bus and onto the red circuit area to be made into circuitry. We also, it turns out, there's about there's a couple of other uses for uh, quartz. Um, so over here, we've got we've got a machine here taking taking the stone that's coming in up here, turning it into sand, feeding it into here to make it into quartz, to make it into laser turrets, because it turns out you need quartz for laser turrets. Who knew? And then also feeding it onto this belt round here in order to make it into the heat exchanger. So, yeah, there's a couple of weird extra 
extra things that require quartz. So we can see here, there's, there's one recipe for making it. There's seven things that require it. So you need it for, for heat pipes. Oh, sorry, it's heat pipes, not heat exchangers. I was looking at the belt the wrong way around. Um, but that's required over here. So you need it for heat pipes, you need it for laser turrets. Uh, you can transport it. You can make it into silicon, so that's what we're using most of it for. Um, you can make it into silicon in a more efficient way. You can convert it into matter, sure, and you can get rid of it. So these these two the thing extra things here are basically the entirety of what other things we might need silicon for, uh, need quartz for. So it's a bit of a squeeze and a bit of a mess cramming it in here. But as long as we don't go crazy with the laser turrets, and we're making them up to, I was going to say we're making them up to 250, we're making them up to 200. But there's obviously some elsewhere in the um, in the logistic system. So we're, make, we're making them here, and as long as we don't go too crazy with them, this will probably be enough. And if it's not, then, well, I'll work out something else. But this is quite convenient because we needed the steel and the... Yeah, we needed both steel and batteries, and um, and glass and my little motors are being brought in over here. Well, they are over here as well, but well, at least the glass is, but there's such a thing as too much spaghetti even for me. So, with a lot of horrible, horrible spaghetti, I've managed to cram all of this in here. Uh, and as I say, set up the meteorite defense guns. And as you can see, they're all now ready to shoot. So when, when we, so we, th this should make meteor attacks a completely solved problem. And as I was saying earlier, made some um, umbrella defenses as well. So Mark has put one of those in up here in the in the obvious place. Uh, it is over here. And having it here means it can get power from the coronal mass ejection backup power. So from the steam batteries that we talked about last time, uh, these those can be turned the steam into electricity through all of these turbines, which can be pumped straight in there because that um, substation touches it. We can also pull power out of the main grid because this pylon here goes straight into the side of it so that's that's good we can pull it pull it from the main grid as well and we can also pull back pull power out of these accumulators here both through the main grid and also this way through this this accumulator so it's probably not necessary having having it connected to this one as well but if you're connecting it to this one and this one then you might as well hook it up there as well it doesn't actually matter it'll be interesting when we do have a coronal mass ejection in nine nine hours and 41 minutes to see which how it where it takes the power from because we're going to have we're going to have some excess power on the um on, on the network here that's generated by all of this all of the free power generation we're going to have lots of power generated generatable here from the coronal mass ejection backup power and we're going to have a load in the um in, in these um uh, accumulators here in the in the grid isolation system so it'll be very interesting to see which ones get used first now in theory hmm in theory, if, if I understand the way Factorio power works properly, I reckon it's going to pull power from anything steam-based, sorry, anything solar-based, which we don't have, we have basically zero, we have basically zero solar power, so, but if there was any, it'll pull from that first. Then it'll pull from anything steam-based, then it'll pull from accumulators. I think these probably count as steam-based as, as, as far as the game is concerned. So that means it'll pull, when it starts running, it'll produce, pull 50% of its power from these, or proportionally, the same amount of power from these as it will from these and that could lead to blackouts in the rest of the base now this doesn't really matter it doesn't it doesn't matter if the rest of the base experiences blackouts while we're having a coronal mass ejection because just it'll only take a couple of minutes to happen and as long as the umbrella defense runs then we don't need to worry about any damage being done but that that would be a downside of hooking it up to this pi this pylon here is that it can also pull from the from the main grid and could potentially cause brownouts now as i say i don't think brownouts actually matter Bet the base can deal with having a short, shortage, shortage of power for a couple of minutes, but it is a thing to consider. So that's the umbrella defences placed. We had, as I was saying last time, we had a massive problem in the past with copper throughput. So we're making copper at quite a decent rate. It was something like 6,000 per uh, per minute, I think. Um, yes, yeah, steady six, exactly 6,000 per minute. That's quite impressive. Um, and but but that was all draining straight into these warehouses here in order to be made into red circuits to be made into blue circuits. So we've still got a decent amount of flow going through here. But as you see, if I'll, I'll work backwards, red circuits we've now got enough of them. We've got to the point I reduced the amount of buffer in the, in these uh, chests to two trains worth because that seemed sensible. More than that seemed frankly excessive. Um, I reduced the amount of buffer in in this warehouse down to one row because again any more than this warehouse is acting as a balancer. So more than that just excessive. The main culprit was the sheer amount of red circuits that were being pulled into the blue circuit factory down here. So I've turned two of the belt sections around here so now we're only use, we're only making blue circuits in half of the machines. So 
So half of them, yes, there's one, two, three rut cut columns out of, out of the six. And I've put in uh, productivity modules into those. So now these are running at plus 12% productivity and lower speed, which means we're getting 12% extra productivity modules coming out per red circuit that goes in. But we're also getting um, a, a massive slowdown on these machines, so they're not taking in as many red circuits as they would be otherwise. Now, this is sort of irrelevant because we're still taking in we're still, well, this this column at least is still taking in a constant half belt. You can tell because it, it hasn't made it up to the top. The top machines are asleep. Over here, we are taking in a half a belt that is making it to the top, and all the machines are running, um, but they're running at where's the speed in here? They're running at minus 30% crafting speed, so 70% of their normal crafting speed. So that's that's reducing the amount of red circuits we're getting through here quite significantly, which is how this buffer has managed to fill up, which is why all of these belts all the way up here are full. And why down here, now these machines are not running at full speed, which means these machines are not running at full speed, which means we're not getting through anything like as much copper as we were before. Now, is that a problem? Who knows? At the moment, we've got three quarters of a train's worth here, and the only place that's picking up the blue circuits at the moment is the this fact is this station here now this station has clearly has some stock available at the moment because all these belts are full and the warehouses have got some stuff in them if we look up here though we'll see that yeah the train limit is currently two so this station thinks it needs to have a lot more blue circuits than it currently does but we haven't started to starve the uh, the bus yet so we've still got the full belt going down into the bus and it's basically not flowing because there's not very much that uses the blue circuits but we do have a decent supply of, we have a we have a decent number of them available here so i think having the slowdown in effect over here that means these are filling up very these are filling up much more slowly is not a problem and in fact i've done the same sort of thing with the uh, capacity on here so there's there's two trains worth in each of these warehouses or two wagons worth per warehouse and one wagon per one warehouse per wagon so this is two trains worth going it, given they're all set up the same this hasn't filled up at all yet which means we're going to be running at this slow speed for a very very long time but that does mean we've now got up to 13 well, we've now got up to a total of 51000 in these uh, in these warehouses and that means we are now down to a train limit of 1 so when this train comes over we're doing a divide here. Yes, we are. We, when this train comes over and drops off the uh, the copper that it's bringing at the moment, here it comes, then we might find that that's actually enough copper for this entire system and the, uh, the train limit will go to zero and our next train of copper can actually go somewhere else rather than just feeding the voracious appetite of the, of the red and blue circuit factories. So let's see what, we, what we've got here. We've got um, 51,000. We're subtracting... Uh, we're, we're subtracting 64,000 from it, so we're getting up here. We've still got um, 11,000, 10,000 on the input. Output signal is one train, but as soon as this drops below 8,000, which, which won't be very long at this rate, as long as there's enough in the train, which I think there is. There we go. That L signal disappeared. So that means now the, the train limit here is set to zero, and that means that assuming we don't get through too much of this copper and you can see it's running through very very slowly and we're putting quite a lot extra in over here um, this train will then clear off and the next copper train will hopefully then actually take some to the bus because I believe we had okay we did have a problem with copper supply on the bus at one point I think that has been fixed though I might be getting into Tristan's update a little bit here um, <laughs> because uh, I think he probably went in and fixed it man by sending a train down here manually to, to dump into these um, in, into all these warehouses um, or maybe, maybe we're in a position where sometimes trains are going here and sometimes they're going to the bus. It, that, that's, that's quite possible. So this next copper train here, is it full? Not quite. How full? How nearly full is it? Uh, 27 out of 40. Okay, so it's, it's filling up. Um, as I said, the copper, the copper system up here is just is still trickling through, chugging away nicely, producing that 6,000 per minute that we're used to. Um, unfortunately, we're just using all of it. But now we can see that uh, there's still quite a way to go here. But the the end, end test of this is going to be if we actually start getting copper brought to here. And this is the um, this is the low density structures factory that I mentioned uh, before, where we're just very very short of copper. Actually, we're very short of steel as well. So st steel is all is still going to be a problem. But it'd be nice to see some copper in here as well. I say steel is a problem. Actually, it's not too much of a problem because here we have this um, this balancing warehouse, which has an enormous amount in it. And I, I came in here and I put in lots of these limits, which is why this has got more than it should have in it. But that means we can just work through this for a while. And then eventually when we have some copper, some, no, some steel available, it can be brought over and unloaded here. Unfortunately, Mike has been rather busy, but we'll talk about that in the next video. So, yes, we've got the... Um, 
over here, the, the sign that we've actually got the copper being produced at an, at an acceptable rate is going to be when we actually see some copper in here. So I came over here, I fixed the, the stupid problem with the belts here that was putting low density structures onto the copper line. So that's, that's gone away now, that won't be an issue. I came in, I, f I fitted a lot of the, uh, the red, red inserters that had been missed before, but not all of them because I came over without enough in my inventory because I'm apparently a muppet. Um, so there's a load missing up here still. I'll need to come out again with some more red, in red inserters and I think probably a lot, of, um, a lot of productivity modules for these because these are really quite expensive. So having a bit extra coming through from these will save us a lot of resources in the long run. So I think productivity moduling all of this, or maybe doing what I did with the red circuits, product and productivity moduling two or three of the columns, and then cutting the rest of them off, is going to be quite a nice way to, to make this a bit cheaper and a bit more sensible. And that gives us potential in the future to, to get higher throughput if and when we have more copper and steel available and require more low density structures just everywhere. There is a more advanced recipe for low density structures, as I talked about last week, but it's horrible. So we're not going to use it in the short term. We may not we may not even use it in the medium term, and I wouldn't like to say about long term at this point, because yeesh. I did ran I did manually send out a train to grab the um the low density structures that have been made here and bring them down to the bus. And so we, we do have some low density structures available in the LDA well, is it here? Yes, it's this one. So we did have some available. I brought them over. I, I set a train going manually. So it brought them all into here, dumped them onto the onto the belts here. They've gone down the belt, 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 down the belt. And oh, and there's there's still some left. So we can see there's there's some left on the belt along here, and a double full belt all the way along here. So there's there is some supply, and these aren't being used until all the way down about here, here, somewhere. I don't know, somewhere anyway. So having them being uh, having a relatively small number of them is not the end of the world. We can uh, we can cope reasonably well, I think. Now there is somewhere else on the bus that uses low density structures and is making them sort of on site at the moment. Uh, it's here, in fact. So what I should be doing is retiring these machines, and then instead of having the, pl the plastic being brought up here, I should be bringing the low density structures up, bop, 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 bomb into here, and that'll then allow us to use that. And we'll we'll be able to then we'll be able to launch these a bit more quickly. We'll be able to get the um, this data a bit more quickly which is somewhat unnecessary because we have a bit of a backlog of it and we're not actually doing any of that research at the moment we have a massive backlog of the yellow yeah the yellow the gold or yellow data cards coming along here so we have plenty we have sufficient of this for the time being but it still would make sense to get rid of this and start producing things in a bit in a slightly nicer way especially if I'm going to productivity module it and therefore they're going to get a bit cheaper I've also started making the Mark II miners. I can't remember where that was. I think it was way over here where we're making all of the, we're making all of the miners very very early on on the bus, just because that's where all the mining drills were being made. Um, here it is. Here we go. So I'm making Mark, Mark II mining drills down here, um, and this was not too difficult. It's basically mining drill Mark One with some steel gears and some rare metals. And I had steel around. Oh no, I brought in steel and rare metal. Steel was already here for this bit, so I, actually I just brought in rare metal, merged the two here onto a, belt, onto a belt. They're brought up here. We've got steel and rare metal being used to make these, and, we're, and we found we've actually found a use for rare metal now, other than turning it in, into landfill. So we've made we've made some Mark II mining drills. I don't believe we've actually used any of these anywhere, but they are a, they are a slight improvement. Improvement. Um, so we've gone from the having the Mark ones available, which as you can see run at a speed of half per second, an area of five by five, and produce some pollution, uh, to the ones that have mining speed of 50% faster at 0.75 per second um, the pollution is ever so slightly more but it's actually less per um, per ore because that is not a, that is not a 50% um, a increase so we're actually better off from a pollution point of view with the Mark 2 mining drills and they mine over a slightly larger area as well at some point we're going to need the big mining drills probably but um, these require blue circuits as well, so I haven't started making these yet because we haven't. We've, whilst we've got quite a lot of these, I haven't wanted to start using them for drills, um, and also we don't have the big electric motors or those or the blue circuits in around here, and the bus is getting kind of cramped and kind of fiddly to put bring more stuff across through um, because I haven't really planned ahead very well here. So what I might well end up doing is just pulling out all of this and then rebuilding another mining drill assembly area further down the bus somewhere because i think that's probably going to be sensible it's going to be it's going to be a lot easier to bring in all of the extra random exotic materials that are needed for the uh, more advanced drills without sort of trying to squeeze them in like this as as is always the case we didn't really leave enough room on the bus for expansion we left little bits of room but it was it's never enough because it never is and also to be honest i didn't leave that much room <laughs> yeah 
We could possibly remove this green circuit factory, but it's making or this red circuit factory, sorry, but it is making a steady dribble of red circuits, which, you know, since we appear to have a shortage of them again. How have we got a shortage of red circuits? There's a Because there's some in a storage box somewhere and this this is broken. Okay, so this this is this is the um this is the problem. We need to fix that because the red circuit, the, the, the bus is being, it's not actually, actually it's not even being starved of red circuits because this crappy little red circuit production facility up here is actually enough at the moment because probably most, mostly because we're not making science. So yes, basically the other chest is looking at the quantity of the quantities available in this chest and going, yeah, sure, there's enough in the logistics system. I'm not going to pass any through. Now, to an extent that might be okay, that would be okay if this belt was infinitely fast because that would mean that we'd if we wouldn't start passing them through from there until all of the throughput from here was used up but sorry all of the all of the stuff that was coming through here was used up and we we're pulling them through faster and the, and the number in here went down but also this belt isn't infinitely fast so having to having the uh, red the red circuit having to go all of this distance in order to fill up the, the gaps down here is probably going to take too long and so we should actually just be having this flowing along here a bit more a bit more readily so um that'll be something to fix in the next uh, in the next stream i think that covers everything i did in the last stream the um building up some of this stuff and doing this doing this horrible horrible spaghetti is actually surprisingly time consuming and it probably actually have been quicker to just sort of move every build everything a bit further out and bring stuff in in a slightly more sensible way and you know actually think about my designs but forward planning is not one of my strong suits so um yeah what can you do so i thought yeah th this seems to work pretty well we'll uh, we'll we'll leave it like this it is it is fairly expandable so as you can see i've left plenty of room up here for building more of the uh, the the um the cargo rocket modules I put, i've left in a certain amount of space here as i was discussing earlier for building more rocket control units and there's loads of space available up here for making more of the uh, the tanks and the uh, cargo pods um which to be honest are being used and produced at about the same rate at the moment anyway so that seems to be okay but i can extend this further if i need to Sure, I can't in I can't increase the number of um, inserters I'm making or the number of tanks, but I'm pretty sure those are not the limiting factors at the moment. Those are made pretty quickly compared to compared compared to all the rest of the rocket stuff. So yes, that's the uh, the halfway point of the video. So I think this is a good point to say uh, if you if you're enjoying the videos and I, I hope you are, please make sure you're subscribed to the channel. I I know from the YouTube stats that about two thirds of the people watching these videos are not subscribed. So if all of you could subscribe, that'd be lovely. Um, but I won't press the point too much because I know how annoying that can be. So let's move on now to uh, what Tristan's been up to this episode, or this, this in the most recent stream. So we had a problem with the silicon train misbehaving. He's taken another look at it, but I'm I'm not quite sure. I don't think either of us are quite sure why it was misbehaving. And to be honest, I can no longer remember why it was misbehaving at all. I think it was just say I think it was sitting in a station when it should have been going off to get stuff. But I'm yeah, we'll we'll see we'll see if if, if there are any problems with that. He's also put in a, um, a, a station down here somewhere for um, heat shield tiles to be brought onto the bus. Here it is. Um, we're not making heat shield tiles anywhere else yet, but we probably will at some point. So this is this is this is future proofing. So we are make, we're making the heat shield tiles on the bus at the moment here, and this is working fine. Um, there's there's no problems with this at the moment. It is producing enough just but in the future I, we're going to be used, trying to use a lot of heat shield tiles for a lot of things so we're going to want to improve that and and, and take it off the bus somewhere and i think uh, there's multiple recipes for heat shield tiles yeah there's okay, there's five of them so this one this one we're using at the moment eight eight sulfur 20 stone tablet two steel plates which is fine i guess um that's these are all recycling ones here we go so here's another one or you can only use one sulfur and four stone tablets which is quite a lot cheaper especially as we seem to be a bit short of stone in exchange for using some iridium as well so i think probably we'll wait until we've got iridium and then when we have a supply of iridium going we'll set up a um a, a town somewhere else in the in the factory that produces the uh, the heat shield tiles using this recipe and that will be better um that's a recycling recipe as well isn't it no no that's a that's no that's a making making something that happens i produce it as a, a side effect okay so this essentially there's two recipes there's this one and this one and at some point we would like to move over to this one because it's a lot cheaper um but we don't have the iridium yet to do so so that's why there's that's why there's he's put a station on the bus it's planning ahead which is kind of impressive <laughs> Ah yes, he's done some balancing. So I've been slapping down these, uh, using warehouses as balancers, just dropping them in, in uh, loaders to put stuff in, loaders to put stuff out, and it kind of works. But the problem is when you're getting, if you're getting a slight, only a slight dribble of stuff in, because if the warehouse is not, doesn't have more than say 50 items in or 100 items in it, something like that, then some of the loaders tend to get favourite, tend to become the favourite. 
And so they tend to output stuff a bit quicker. They, they, more of the stuff tends to go to those particular air loaders than other ones. And you get even more so on sides of the belts. You tend to get more going out on the left-hand side than the right-hand side. And I believe that's something to do with the way the loaders are designed. They're, um, internally, there are a load of inserters, which, uh, which means you get some funny business going on with what I'm going to continue to call favouritism. So in order to get round that, there's a couple of ways we've, um, we've we've hooked this up. So this is this is I believe Tristan's way of doing it, where you have um, all, after the loader, every each belt has a has a circuit connection which is which is reading from the from the belt. So we're here we're, we're reading the belt contents and holding it. And we're doing that across all eight of them. And if there's more than eight, then it would just be more than that. And then all of the outputs are looking to see if there's at least 64, which I believe in. Yeah, is, is uh, so you can you can fit eight on e eight of an item on each block, essentially, or each piece of belt. So it's looking to make sure that these are all completely full. And if they are completely full, then it'll turn on these belts and allow the stuff to be passed out. So if you have a shortage of stuff, then it'll wait until all of these are full, and then it'll and then it'll turn them all on, and it will allow essentially one one belt piece is worth full uh, full of it through and if there's if there's still a short if there's a still a shortage then the belts behind won't fill up quickly so it'll it'll pause and then when they do fill up it'll let another block through and so on so every so often you'll get a burst of eight pieces going through on each belt if if on the other hand it's like like we are at the moment and you've got load you've got plenty of of the of, of the stuff then as soon as it starts running these will fill up immediately because these are loaders and so they fill things up it built belts up instantly as fast as they can flow so this would so in that case you get this flowing steadily um and it would just flow constantly because these would never the, the number on here would never drop below 64 so these would flow constantly everything would just flow nicely and you won't have any issues there is another way which somebody else i think probably mark because it's technically slightly more efficient um has been doing i don't know where to look let's try over here because this is no um I don't know. I've looked around quite a lot, and I can't find any any examples of it. But I know I know they exist. I just can't find any of them. And that's so. The other alternative is where you you still wire up the um, the be output belts like this and tell, have them turn on and off when uh, based on the number of, um, of 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 whatever it is that's available. But you then wire that instead of wiring it into all these other belts, you wire it directly into the warehouse, and you say that as long as there's at least a hundred or two hundred or something like that, it doesn't matter exactly as long as it's a decent number, as long as it's enough to fill all of the outputs. Then you say you can run as long as there's a decent amount in here, and that that works too. Both are uh, both are options. They there's no significant difference between them, given that wires or given that cables are free in space exploration. There's no significant difference between the two designs. They just work in slightly different ways. Another quite interesting thing that Tristan's been doing, and I'm going to talk about this more in a future episode once we've actually used it and tested it. But he's working on a ghost scanner train. So down here we have this train here, which is hooked up to a receive signal receiver here, which probably has a useful name like uh, Norvis Construction. There we go. Um, and so the idea is that with the Ghost Planner mod, you can you can you can have a thing that you connect to a RoboPort network in a, in a way I'm not entirely familiar with because I haven't done it yet, and that that then feeds out a signal of all the things that are waiting for that need items for construction. So basically all of these things that would appear on here for that for that RoboPort network area. And then you, what you can do with that then is feed it into a uh, transmitter. Which you then send to this receiver, which you then wire into some shenaniganery with the um, circuit networks. But most importantly, you wire it into a requester chest here, um, and you can then have that. So that that requester chest will then request all the bits and pieces that that build you're working on requires. They all get brought out to here and dumped into the train. Oh, and that's why there's stuff going along here. So we've got we've got cables here to, to subtract whatever's in the train from what's on the in the request. So you don't end up requesting multiples of things. And probably I imagine a thing that will tell it to only pass the signal through if there's a train in here. But we'll look into that as I say in a bit more detail next time. But suffice to say, the idea of this is that you go out, you you say, well, I want to build up a a, a thing, and so you you put down a, 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 the entire thing in ghost form and then put some put some. Um, Robo ports around it so it detects the whole thing. Then you hook that up to a, a transmitter and you have a, and you have a, a ghost drop station. Then the train will automatically load up with all the things it needs. Then then probably if it's, if it's set up correctly, once it's full or once it's got all the stuff it needs, maybe either. You never know if it's really cleverly programmed. Then it will come out here to your to your new town. It will unload all of the stuff. Your robots will build then just build the um, the thing you're waiting for. And that way you don't have you don't have the problem I had over 
here where you come out and you go oh I don't have enough red inserters to, to finish this build off um, because all of the stuff will just be automatically brought out to you so that's going to be assuming it works which I have no reason to assume it won't at the moment but it, it's probably going to take a bit of fiddling before it's perfect but it, once it's working that'll be really really handy for any builds we do on this planet He's also put put landfill onto the blueprint, so that's quite handy. In in the game blueprints, we've got various rail blueprints in here, so we've got um, like like these ones. Apparently, he's gone through and put landfill in on some of them, but I don't see it on these ones. Maybe it's in, or maybe it just doesn't show up. I could I don't know. I can't tell whether they're landfilled or not. But some of these apparently now. Oh, there we go. There's some landfill. So he's got land, landfill on the loop back at least, and maybe it's on these ones as well, and we just can't see it because it's underneath the um, <laughs> underneath the uh, what what's names. But yeah, these are um, things that can out can be used. I don't know why there's two of everything. Oh, one set's chunk. Of no, I don't know why there's two sets of everything. Um, but yeah, so they've now got landfill on them for as and when necessary. Um, we've got more. Oops, let's switch to stay in map mode. We've got some more um, greenhouses in up here now, which are producing wood. And there's 30,000 in there, so it looks like that's sufficient. Uh, that is to go into the into being made into coke to be made into steel, because at one point the wood, the coke, and therefore the wood, or rather possibly the other way around, was the um, was the limiting factor for steel. Now it's probably just that we're using um, antique furnaces down here. So uh, we'll we'll hopefully get that upgraded at some point. He stretched the plastic train, which is good because we're having we were we had enough plastic being made over here, but we had a problem where it wasn't being transported around quickly enough. So now that he's gone from we've gone from a one two train to a one two one two train, so we can transport literally twice as much each time a train goes. In the future, we could potentially put in a second plastic train if necessary, but for now this will this will this is, seems to be able to keep up. We'll um, we'll see in a in a moment whether this train goes. Unless it's only half full, we probably won't watch it for that long. There's another copper train as well, as we I think have um, may or may not no may probably haven't discussed. But now we've got uh, two trains carrying copper plates around because there's so many of them required just by so many different areas that we want to have more trains carrying them. And we were at the point where the train. Oh, here's the here's the other train coming back in now. Probably uh, yes, it is. So at the, at the moment we don't re we are only just have need for two copper trains, but it is slightly quicker bringing it around, tra transporting it around if we have if we do have two. And that one's taken off to the uh, the red circuit factory again. So maybe that isn't doing quite as well as I thought it was. We've got another oil oil mine over here now. So this is there's some um, extra extra oil being dug up over here. And we, as usual, we've got a clean up, the standard cleanup system running around it, which you'll have seen many many times by now. Um, but yeah, we've got oil being dug up from these two conveniently close um, or, um, oil uh, crude oil patches going into the tanks here. And a train can come over here and grab it when it's needed. But these tanks seem to be full, so it looks like we're actually okay for oil at the moment, which is quite impressive. Maybe that means we should just come along and stick some massive tanks on the back of here as for extra storage space. In fact, that might be worth doing if they can, if we can squeeze in one of the massive tanks per per uh, wagon. It might mean it might enable. To, it probably won't improve the uh, loading efficiency particularly because we are going straight from tanks and these tanks hold the same amount as a, as a fluid wagon. So it probably doesn't matter. It just means a bit more storage space, but we've got quite a lot of storage space anyway. So it's probably all right. Tristan has also apparently had horror at Mike's northern wall design. Let's, we will, we'll save that for next time, I think. Um... And he's also done some prioritization on the oil um, oil collection. So in theory, oil should only be picked up from here if we're running low on oil down here. Now, I'll have to have a look around at some point and work out how, exactly how he's done that and whether it works. But he says it requires some, some improvement, so it's clearly not finished. Um, so yeah, that's um, going on quite nicely. He's uh, oh, extended the core uranium station a bit. Oh, that's probably putting in a, making this a one two one two train as opposed to the uh, the one two as it was before. I, I, I'm not entirely hundred percent sure, but he says he's, he says he's extended it. So I imagine that means he's put these extra. Um, he's, he's doubled the length of it. So that brings brings us to an end of uh, what I've been doing and what Tristan's been doing this episode. Um, th th thank you for watching, and uh, I hope you'll come back tomorrow for the other half of it, where we'll delve into uh, what Mark and Mike have been doing. I suspect these episodes, might, these videos, might be a little um, imbalanced time-wise because I don't think I, I suspect I'm not going to be able to talk about what they've been doing for quite as long. But I've, I've tried to delay a couple of things here and there for, the, for them. So yeah, come back tomorrow for the other half of this this uh, update. Come back on on um, uh, the day after for to see what I've been up to on Dyson Sphere program. We'll. Uh, Goodness knows what I've been doing because I haven't actually played that stream yet at the time I'm recording this. So there's going to be there's going to be plenty to talk about, I'm sure. Come back on Monday to actually watch us playing live. That'll be 7:30 uh, UK time. So we've got uh, 
something will be going on there. We'll be expanding our... We'll, we'll hopefully be going to space. I mean, we've got a cargo rocket. We've actually built a cargo rocket now. We haven't fueled it, but... Sh <laughs> we're getting, things are going quite nicely here. We're getting, we are making good progress. We just haven't... It just took slightly longer to build up all this spaghetti than I was expecting. So, we'll, we'll launch this next, next stream. I can almost guarantee it. Um, I'm not going to promise it, but I'm going to almost guarantee it. <laughs> so, that'll be, a, that'll be a worthwhile thing to come along and see. And I'll be streaming Dyson Sphere Program on Wednesday as well. And I think there's... What day, what day are we? Yes, there's going to be a tutorial video coming out on Tuesday. We're going to uh, how to program spaceships in a little bit more depth because people have said I, I rushed through the uh, the complicated part a little bit too much. So I'm, I've uh, made an effort to do that in, the, in a bit more detail. So that'll be coming out on Tuesday. Uh, so thank you for watching. Don't forget to check out our sponsor. That's trefoil.be slash Lawrence Plays. And if you go along there, so, uh, sign up using the code Lawrence Plays, you'll get 20% off your first order and you'll make everybody happy. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.